Good morning. This is uh, November 14th, which makes it 18th century dress-up day for my friend Emma Elizabeth. Today, uh, we are going to be showing you how to get dressed for an event outside in the fall uh, where you might be doing a parade, reads across America, attending a winter encampment, reenacting some kind of a winter event. Uh, and this would be for, for cold weather primarily more uh, here in the Northwest, it works even for summer, but in other parts of the country, this is definitely the cold weather wear. I'm going to be showing you uh, how to get dressed in just a few minutes instead of the usual hour and a half that it takes me to put on a gown and a petticoat and all the underlayers uh, that make for a completely historic, historically accurate portrayal for a tea or some kind of fancy indoor occasion or one of our festivals that goes on for many days. This is something that you can do in just a few minutes. So uh, the first thing that I'm going to start with is what I'm wearing now is the kind of driving clothes I would be in. Now I've chosen these somewhat carefully. This is a linen shirt and it has two pockets and a, and a fairly flat laying collar. I have on a pair of, of stretchy uh, Gloria Vanderbilt pants that are in a cinnamon brown that looks like they could be a colonial color. Now as you get out of your car on arriving at one of these events, uh, it could be raining, you might not be able to get dressed in your car easily, and so I'm going to show you some of the simplest things to do. One of the first things that I do, and you can even drive this way, is to put on a period correct shawl. Now this is a shawl that is available from Burnley and Trowbridge. It's also available from the DAR, um, the museum shop, the store. And you just, you can put this on, you can tuck it in your waistband, you can tie it around you, but it, all it needs to do is is cover you and you can drive this way too. Then um, the next thing that I would do as I'm getting ready in my car, um, I might put my boots on. Now sometimes boots, tall boots, are hard to get on. Uh, but the first thing I would do in order to look paired correct is I would tuck my pants into my socks. Now if you happen to have another petticoat, now with your pants tucked into your socks and pulled up just a little bit, you can make that look like a regular woman's lower foot in a regular pair of shoes. And these would be the regular pair of shoes, camp shoes, and you can drive in those quite nicely. Or to put on a pair of boots, these are the typical riding boot that would be weatherproof. These are rubber, they look like a riding boot, they're very old and they hold up very well and they keep your legs very warm. So um, having a loose garment is not a problem to keep your legs warm. So you just stick your foot in and um, pull the boot on in the car. It's a, a little bit tricky in the, the driver's seat. And doing the same thing to my other foot, I'm gonna tuck my socks in and pull the boot on. Now these are long wool socks. They're period correct and they make for an easy get, getting ready department. Now I'm ready for the next layer, which is totally simple. This is a Redding Goat. A Redding Goat is the woman's copy of a man's great coat. Now this one is made out of a mid-weight brown wool, Druroy. It's a, a stuff, uh, worsted, it's a, a stuff which is a woolen material from Burnley and Trowbridge, and it is not expensive. I think it was $13 a yard. It takes a lot of yardage to make a Redding Goat. A Redding Goat is full length, and mine has um, a sh a, the capelets that go around the shoulders that protect you from the rain, and the back is in furrow. That means pleated, and the, t the section goes all the way from the top to the bottom of the garment, uh, which makes it so that you could change the size if you ever needed to. Um, the pattern for this, there aren't uh, particularly uh, available ready go patterns. There is a, a, design, a couple designs of them. I think Janet Arnold book has one. And this one, I combined Janet Arnold um, pattern description uh, with another picture of the Countess of Effingham. And I've spoken to you before about her. Uh, she's one that is wearing a Redding Goat that is a uh, um, stand-up collar style with uh, capelets and uh, wearing a hat that I will also be wearing. Now this is lined in linen, just the top half, 
And as you can see, I have applied a linen ruffle to the sleeve, which makes it easy then to just slip it on over what I'm wearing, tuck in the scarf, and overlap the, the coat. Now, it overlaps just a bit in front and then I pin it. Then it has buttons sewn on because the reading goats were made to pattern after the men's wear, which did have buttons. My buttons are just a decorative buttons. And in fact, this is pinned together. I leave the pins right in the ready goat. And now with my scarf tucked in, I am looking quite the colonial. I sometimes wear um, a petticoat underneath, which is a little harder to get into in the car, but I do mine in two sections. So you tie on the back and then you tie in the front and you can drive in those fairly easily if it's not too fancy. Now for the, for the cap, um, this is a little fancier cap and I put a comb in the front of the cap. So I just stick it on my head and stick the comb in and it's there. Now, this is the uh, hat that I have shown for the last 18th century video day. And it's also modeled after the one that the Countess of Effingham wore. And I, in the inside, I put in two combs that also hold it in and you stick it just over the cap and stick in the combs and you're ready to go. Um, outdoors, I might not be wearing my glasses since I'm not having to look at anything. Uh, so having a place to put those is, is handy. These glasses, they come in a variety of styles. These are from uh, glasses.com. They're little round circular glasses and I have two sizes. Uh, these are the larger size so I can read and uh, manage things while I'm driving. Now what I might be wearing in addition to uh, my boots would be I have a, bla a short black pair of gloves. Uh, these are leather. They're, they're fairly loose, easy to get on. They don't uh, stick to your wet hands or anything. They're not particularly fancy, but they're very functional. And then I have, that would also go with this outfit, a pair of pigskin gloves that are very well worn. So if you're having to do uh, messy camp work, these fit very nicely, but if you're having to do messy camp work, you might not want to wear your best gloves. The last pair of gloves that I have that are my option, these are my dressy gloves. These are long, um, very thin, dark brown gloves that are very uh, difficult to get on and off. So you don't want to have to get these on and off very many times. And once you get these on, they uh, look very, uh, very much the ladies' riding glove, um, where you have somebody else doing all the work for you. Now, in addition to uh, wearing the gloves, I might carry um, a little basket. Now, my basket is lined in linen, and in my basket, I also have a little drawstring purse. The drawstring purse just keeps my essential items from getting confused with everything else in the basket. Now going to an event, you also might find that you're thirsty. So in my basket, I carry a mug. And if you're at all involved in events that are promoting things, I have a leather cover for flyers uh, of my upcoming events, a postcard of the Liberty Calls event from August in a Port Angeles at the George Washington Inn and Estate. And I have other little items that might promote things that are activities that we do as living historians. So that is pretty much my assemble that we have for today. I'll turn around so you can see the back. Um, as you see, this coat was very easy to get on and it didn't take me very long to get ready to be looking period correct. Uh, however, the underlayers are not. And thank you for watching.